debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. It's that time of year when designers around the world show off their new collections. Much of the talk, however, has not been about the clothes, but those wearing them, as the size zero debate intensifies following the death of two models from anorexia last year. Hannah is 18. She suffered from anorexia for several years. Celebrities, or most celebrities, are all really thin, and so, whether consciously or not, we begin to associate that with being successful and happy. And hardly ever are there normal, average-sized women in the media who are happy and successful. Madrid has taken the unprecedented step of banning underweight models from the catwalk. Milan has followed suit. London and New York have stopped short of regulating, but the British Fashion Council has called on designers to use only healthy models aged 16 and over, though what the definition of healthy is remains unclear as the council refused to speak to us. 20-year-old Caroline, who's recovering from anorexia, says the link between her illness and the fashion industry is not that simple. Just me Okay. I'm now at a, a healthy body weight, but I do find it very difficult when I read magazines. And, you know, in some magazines, they're, one week they're pointing out who's, you know, who's slimmed down and who's the thinnest. And the next week they're pointing out people who are too big. Being in recovery, I do find that very hard to look at and not compare myself to these people. But I don't think it's the media's fault or super slim celebrities' fault. I think they make it worse, but I don't think they're the sole trigger. Yeah. So what exactly is an eating disorder? We asked Dr. Nadia Mikali, a clinical lecturer specialised in eating disorders at the Institute of Psychiatry at King's College, London. Within eating disorders, we characterize um, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and uh, what is called eating disorders, not otherwise specified. In general, uh, they are um, quite um, complex, as I was saying, illnesses. And uh, um, they are all, uh, they have in common the fact that they are characterized by a certain um, increased concern about one's own weight and shape and dread of fatness. An estimated 4 to 5 percent of the population suffers from an eating disorder. The question is, are these figures on the rise? The kind of most recent findings from research have shown that um, bulimia nervosa has kind of consistently risen since the 90s. It's difficult to know whether that is a true rise or whether it is that we are just more able to uh, you know, diagnose it and recognize it. There is some evidence that anorexia nervosa, it's quite a stable disorder with a prevalence that has been pretty much the same across the years and potentially across the centuries. The most common form of eating disorder is bulimia, which involves binge eating followed by purging. Anorexia, which is characterized by voluntary starvation, only represents 10% of eating disorders. Nine out of 10 sufferers are female. We also now have a generation of mothers whose own eating and body image has been so under assault in the last 20 years that unwittingly they're passing on to their daughters with their mothers, with their milk, a kind of anxiety and worry around feeding and around bodies. If you look at it from the point of view of a, of a developing young girl, you will see that she is looking at her mother, who is after all her role model, and thinking, or just absorbing the notion that to be female means to be preoccupied and disturbed about your body and to always be trying to change it. According to medical experts, an eating disorder is far more complex than simply wanting to be slim to achieve some fashionable slender ideal. It's triggered by a combination of factors. Probably, again, from studies that have been carried out around the world, the genetic component explains about 60 to 80 percent of um, eating disorders, both in anorexia and bulimia. But there is obviously the rest that is explained by environmental factors. Eating disorders often exist alongside other mental illnesses or psychological disorders, such as clinical levels of perfectionism, obsessive compulsive disorder or depression. There is also a high rate of sexual abuse in childhood experienced in those diagnosed with anorexia. Caroline says in her case, the onset of anorexia was closely linked to depression. It was because I was so depressed I lost my appetite and 
that that was how my eating disorder developed. I lost my appetite, and the more depressed I got, the less I ate, the less I ate, the more depressed I got. It just went round in a vicious circle. Studies have highlighted the role of cultural factors such as the promotion of thinness as the ideal female body shape in Western society. But Dr. David Wood from the Ellen Mead Centre for Eating Disorders in North London says it's too easy to point the finger of blame at the fashion industry. All of us like to have scapegoats and it's much easier to have someone else to blame. And I think it's much easier to blame the fashion industry than to say, what responsibility do I have in this? You know, well, which magazines do I buy? I don't believe that the fashion industry is responsible for eating disorders, but I do think that they get tied up in quite um, complicated and unhelpful trends in our society in which thinness as a condition, as a tray, is, is valued highly. In recent years, a variety of websites have sprung up as part of the so-called pro-Anna movement. Its claim is that anorexia and bulimia can be a lifestyle choice, promoting the illusion that sufferers are in control of their illness. These sites offer tips for weight loss and feature so-called inspiration photographs, pictures of models and celebrities that have been altered to make them look thinner. I don't think you can choose to have anorexia as a lifestyle choice. Um, it makes me very angry when people say that because it certainly wasn't a choice for me. Um, it just came upon me and I suffer quite badly from it. The idea that anyone suffering from an illness like anorexia has a choice about it is, is just ludicrous, it's laughable. None of the people that I see have any choice at all about how they manage their day-to-day -day lives. They are absolutely... Um, tyrannised by the anorexia, the anorexia in their head. However, while there's increased concern about young girls' health, the diet industry has never been in better shape. As people grow increasingly overweight, the ideal body continues to shrink. What's really disturbing is how much money there is to be made. I mean, how much money the diet industry has made out of on the back of the aesthetic of thinness, if you like. Because dieting is the sort of, the first port of call for people when they feel distressed about their body. In a society of plenty where thinness has come to be seen as a moral value reflecting self-control and restraint, it's no surprise that eating disorders are becoming a growing source of concern. But for those who suffer from illnesses such as anorexia, the deadliest of psychiatric disorders with a 10% mortality rate, it's not just another trend.